Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, irrespective of where you are connecting from. And um, thank you to my wonderful uh, uh, host, right? Um, uh, Musinda, oh, that, that, that was so, so, so smooth, right? I, I love that. So thank you. I uh, thank you. We don't waste too much of our time, uh, right? I say once again, a very big welcome to every one of us and welcome to our webinar, which we usually have every third uh, Thursday of every month. Okay, so what are the things we'll be doing today? So we just we just go straight to the point without wasting much of our, our time. Understanding how business generates revenue, uh, irrespective of what you do, irrespective of the business or businesses that you do, definitely uh, re revenue is, is key. Revenue is key, all right? Yes, uh, business is all about you generating income, but all right, you generate that income, you need to manage your cost efficiently so that you have that good profitability stand. Then it's not all about profits. Uh, the finance guys are always more concerned about the cash, those free cash that comes from the business because everything is all about money, money, money. So that cash element is very important. So you understanding how your business generates revenue and because revenue is actually the umbrella of every business leave it or take it even a non uh an ngo uh, uh, ngo uh, establishment also need income right so <laughs> revenue is like the umbrella because if anything eats that's your revenue the business is gone everyone is eating from the revenue and component of revenue we kind of tie that into what we call drivers in business and financial modeling. Financial modeling as a whole is all about driver. What is driving this line item? What is driving this line item? I want to forecast this. What can I use as a biz, right? So then we come with our games, prizes, and demo. So let's take a look at it. As I said, you understanding how business generates revenue is very important. Someone give you a, a, a job, a task to do that. Oh, please, can you build a model for me? The first thing you ask, how will you be generating revenue? What are the strategy? around it in generating revenue a uh, fintech is more like uh, uh having his own uh his, his own stand now right as my colleague mentioned um and it's really taking over and there's one power in what is making them gain ground and having that value having that huge valuation right so those are the things we'll take a look at today so when you hear anything like components right uh um, quite short, uh, some people that have listened to my uh, uh my presentation we, we always understand how i try to explain things components anytime you hear anything like components it's just saying what are the one or two things that we just need to put together before we call this thing disney so if i ask you what are the components of a car definitely you're telling me oh you must have your four tires right i know we have three wheels tire we have two <laughs> right but okay we have four you have your windscreen right you have your bonnet you have your engine you have the seats right those things must be put together before you call it that name. Now, let's relate that to we say component of revenue, irrespective of the industry. I mentioned, I repeat that, irrespective of the industry, irrespective of the uh, business canvas or your business model that you operate, you must always have price and quantity. Take it or leave it. For a manufacturing firm, you are saying, oh, how much are you selling this your product? Are you selling per carton? Are you selling per unit? Are you selling in pieces? Then the quantity, total quantity, total unit that will be sold or that was sold at this particular period and you multiply it by each other and it gives you the revenue. You go to a telecommunication industry, they're saying, oh, what is our price? What is our quantity? Definitely price or average revenue per users and the quantity is the total subscriber that we have. Multiply it, it gives you the revenue. You go to oil and gas, you say, oh, what is the price per barrel or how you decide to measure it, right? Then you multiply it by the total production, right? You go to banks, you're asking, oh, banks, how do you generate revenue? Because those are the things that you need to understand. So oh, for banks to generate revenue, focusing on their core business operation, definitely, oh, what's the total loan that they've given out, which is comes with quantity, right? Total loan that has been given out. And what is the yield that was charged? Well, like what's the interest that was charged on each of the respective loan? And that will give you their revenue. So as a modeler, first thing you need to understand, how is this business generating revenue? Right, and that's more like what is what really drives the business. Understanding how business generates revenue, they said, and that now kind of tie into how you approach building a model. Then people usually get stuck when it comes to let's build industry based model. Right, I have a colleague of mine that was relieved of his duty a while ago. He's been a modeler for the past four years. Then he's going to they just they went to another company industry. Right, they gave him. Oh, 
can you build a model for us which is a bank and he, he got stuck it was, it was funny right and, and it's not as if he does not know it because he actually did not have that knowledge of this basic thing so kinds of model and how do we approach that as i said ask how is this business generating revenue and that will guide you into you knowing where to start the model build from most businesses or most business or businesses they are more of profit or loss driven which means the line item that drives the whole business operation can be found in their profit or loss account so you see that cost of sales let's say for a manufacturing company cost of sales that's where you see their uh opening stock their raw material purchases their uh, inventory the unit suit so which means the more unit they sell the more revenue they can generate so which more like we call it top line item so that revenue and cost of sale is what really drives the whole business right and there was this school of thought that i saying yes measure everything when we do our ratio calculation we measure everything against revenue but we should always remember that cost of sale are more like unavoidable uh expenses that you must incur before you generate that revenue so if you have our gross profit you should be able to also measure everything against gross profit so management accounting we call it contribution because that's what is left for everyone to eat from so which means most businesses are profit or loss driven and the other one is balance sheet driven so most financial institution are balance sheet driven for example a bank how do they generate money let's let's look at the, at, at the true map of it you take your money you take it to the bank as savings it comes under their liabilities right which means to start the build for that kind of business you need to start from what the liabilities how many uh customer we deposit at this particular period one right what is the average deposit per each of these customer then you multiply that it gives you what you have as deposits and savings in their liabilities then they now convert that savings they convert it to their assets which becomes the loan and advances that they now give out on which they now charge that yield or some call it interest rate to now go back to their profit or loss account which means most of their line item in profit or loss account they depend on what they depend on balance sheet so which means to build a model for a bank you build out the balance sheet first you don't start from profit or loss account because interest income interest expense uh impairments right um which other which other one those those fees income fees expense they rely on those two guys right and you have some investment security that they also do so you you as a model those are the things that you first need to understand before you jump into building a model because if you want to build a model for a bank if you are starting from profit or loss account automatically you are off though there are some companies that they are more like in between and a little bit balanced right but that will be a discussion for another for another day now, as i said what is all about drivers you want to forecast this thing you're asking what are the things that can drive this so let's say for example i want to forecast my revenue and i'm asking what are the components of this my revenue what must i have before i can get this guy called revenue so you can have your price right quantity uh, and above all capacity is, is one thing if you have a platform that can only take 1000 subscriber then it does not make sense when you are forecasting that we uh, generate revenue from 1500 subscriber without making provision to expand your capacity demand right this is more like you now taking it a step further into the economy right if the purchasing power is high definitely you tend to sell more right growth for, for for startup is always easy to break things down into price quantity but when it comes to mature company uh, right might be difficult to break things down so at such we use what we call growth now competition is one if your business is so so good right if it's so so good then expect competition right because they would also come into play so those are the things so for, you want to forecast your cost of sales as i said revenue is like the umbrella of every business if there's a case where you really cannot break things down you can set cost of goods sold as a percent of our revenue right if you can break things down what are the cost per this unit how many units right factor in the inflation which kind of take care time value of money go straight to the next one our selling general and admin expenses which we also call our operating costs as i said almost every line item can be set as a driver to your revenue right 
Now remember, that revenue must be more like the key driver of the business, right? So if you can break everything down into each cost, our monthly cost, our salary, you can also do that. Inflation, time value of money, the competition, are you wanting to expand? Definitely, if you're expanding, uh, you then also have to do what? To uh, incur some operating expenses. Now, depreciation. So these are more like the line item that you can have in a profit or loss account. Depreciation, you know, if the company does not have uh, asset, definitely there's nothing you are depreciating, right? Fixed assets, what is the depreciation rate or what is the asset lifespan? For the net finance cost, right? Are they making use of loan financing? Do they have a draft? What is the rate on it, right? What is the cash investment? Are they investing some of their then for the tax we are saying is their profit before tax and what is the tax rate right keeping everything everything being equal so let's go straight to our demo and what i want us to do today is this uh i will try as much as possible to be very very detailed uh, and if need be for us to have um the part two of this so i'm going to start with a blank excel blank excel right i could have decided to 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 start with um, a model but, but, but i decided to keep things let's keep things simple Let's keep this simple. Uh, let's keep things simple, right? So, 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 so let me just create a, a sample. Let me create a sample uh, uh, template, right? So when I build in my model, I don't usually like seeing this um, this line. I don't know why. I always like it to show like our white paper, right? <laughs> so, so let so let me keep this. All right, let me just keep this. So let me just create a, a sample, just a sample, a simple template. So, so that we can build everything from scratch and we carry everyone along. So let me say, what's the name of our company? Let me call this the Brown, uh, the Brown Tech Limited. I hope nobody is using that name. Just, just a generic name. Or anyone want to suggest a better name for us? So let me put it in this color. Right, so what do we do? Uh, let's see, um, um, what do we do, what do we do? Anyone, anyone? So loan uh, offering. So, so, so they don't usually call it little offering. Let's say we are offering cash support, right? Cash support, <laughs> cash support to individual. You know those kind of uh, right word that you need to use when you think about business strategy. So uh, I think this is fine. So let me put this as the let me have. So cash support, uh, is it to individual? Okay, oh, yeah. cash support to individual, right? I'm just trying to create create something. So let me call this description. I put this as my description. Let me make this my unit. And here I can have some of my inputs come here. All right. And let me see, I can have my row total here as well. Let me reduce this guy a little bit. So let's say our period. So let me just type, um, let's say 31st, uh, 31st December 2021. So let's, let's just, let's. Don't worry about it. So let me just put this plus one, right? We'll convert this into date. Then here, uh, I really don't want to add code. Well, okay. So, so, so let's just keep things constant, right? Right. Forgive me. So our standard is saying you should never add code in a formula, but months, let's put this as 12, right? So minus one, so that I can give us the end date. I think this, this can still be forgiven. If you type 12 like this, 12 will always be 12. Right, unless they want to convert the model to maybe early or so, <laughs> uh, to quarterly. Okay, I hope the date is correct. First to December, uh, first to December. Okay, great. Then let's extract the year. So let me use my year function in Excel. And let me, so I would like to make this appear like this of financial F and F. Yes, so uh, don't worry. Right, so let me put this as period count, this plus one. I can have this. Right, so let me keep this constant. So if I scroll down, 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 this heading is still there, right? Uh, I'm not a friend of, of, of multiple colors, but right, let, let's, let's, let's just, uh, let's, let's, let's design this a little bit. Okay, I think this is, this is good. This is good. Just a sample template. It's just a sample template. It's just a sample template. Okay. So let me now duplicate this. Let me duplicate it. That worksheet. Please, in case I'm doing something and you, 
Uh, yeah, I know I'm, I'm very fast. Don't mind. Don't mind me. I don't know why I'm, I'm always this fast, right? Because you can always ask questions and I can um, refresh back. So let me call this my input, right? And let me call this my calculation. So let me call this my calculation. And I'll call this my what? Let me call this my output. So output component of our model. Basically, we need our inputs, the calculation, and our outputs, right? So so let's work with that approach. So here. Let me put this right too. So for them, call this assumptions. Assumptions. So you can always be creative when you are building your own template. It's you not know, must if you they kind of follow this, right? Uh, you are allowed. To, you, are, you, are, you can be very very flexible. So let me call this calculations. Let me call this our. So let me just copy this style. Right. Let me call this our outputs. So, so I, I always encourage uh, anytime you want to build any model, it's always good you start afresh. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm not a template modeler. I prefer to create my my stuff uh, right from from onset. So now let's first uh, let's assume um, uh, a, a a business case now, right? Uh, let us say we want to um, so we want to create our revenue component. So let me call this our revenue revenue component. So under my input, let me put this at uh, this time, right? But before we do that, this is my calculations. So uh, I want this my calculation to be monthly, right? And not yearly. It's always good whenever you are building a model for a startup to always make it a monthly model. It's kind of telling you a whole story about, about that. So this, instead of having this 12, I'll just make it a one month. So it's one month period. Right, so I actually need 60 because five years multiplied by six. Okay, five years multiplied by 12. They don't mind me, they, this, this math of a thing. <laughs> so I need this. Uh, so I'll just come here equal to last period plus one. Remember, this is a calculation worksheet, so must not have any input. Then let me just try and count uh, 60 period, 60 period, 60 period. So I need like 60 period, 60 months. Okay, so let me just copy that to right. Okay, now I have this. Then I can now go ahead. Left to right consistency, which is what our financial modeling standard is saying. Build only for period one, right? And just copy everything. So I'll just copy this up to the 60 months. Let me open up everything. Right, so December 31st, 2026. That's the same thing we have in our yearly home. Okay, right. So build it and you can always consolidate this into a yearly model, right? So what I'm going to do now is I will now close this my Excel here. So by the time I put a formula in year one, I can always drag it for the 60 years. Even if I have uh, 10,000 years, the standard is saying left to right consistency, build it in period one, then copy it to the right. So let me just do this and let me close it. You can right click, right? And click on this hide or use the shortcuts, but that's, 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 you can always learn about that. So that's what we have for our calculations. Now let's think about our assumptions. As I said, this is a FinTech and what they want to be doing is, uh, they want to be giving out, uh, so, 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 so let's first understand how the business work because as a modeler, uh, you really all need to understand uh, what this business is all about. So let's assume what we want to be doing now is we want to be giving loan to individuals, right? And, and the way we are going to approach it is this, uh, everything being equal, as I said, you, you can be flexible and, and do things just for the purpose of this model. So let, we will try and restrict it to some certain things. Let's assume uh, we want to be giving loan out to people and uh, our source of loan will be, uh, so, so the platform will actually be taking care of two things. You can actually save on the platform, right? And you can also borrow money from the platform. So keeping it, everything being equal, uh, we, our, the total loans that we can give out will be dependent on, we depend on our savings. So, which means if we have like 100 million savings from people on our platform, that means we can give out loan up to that 100 million. But the next thing you need to ask is this. We need to make provision for people that might want to withdraw on the platform. So, which means we really cannot give out the whole 100 million out as a loan. We need to make provision for some. Right. So, so let, let, let's take it. Let's, let's start. So let me call this our savings assumptions. Right. Let's call this our savings assumptions, our savings assumption. Or we can call it savings input. That one. Savings input or savings drivers. One. Right. Savings input. 
And let's let's first start before we even go here. We are missing out something which is more like the main driver of the business. Users, some call it uh, customers, right? Uh, either ways, either ways, either ways. Users or customers, right? So this one, let's call this our uh, users, users inputs, or maybe users drivers or so. So first thing we need to understand is this: we need our base users. Right, so there's something we call base users, and there's something we now call active users. So these two, they are very, very important. Right, most time it's not about the number. You, yes, you can have like one million uh, users on your platform. What if <laughs> maybe just five percent are actually making? Um, just five percent are actually active. Right, which means the business is actually generating revenue from them. So let's start. So let's say our base users. Let's assume for the base period, uh, we can. So let me put that here. So I think this should be number, right? This should be a count. So let me just use this as number. So remember, we created a unit column here. Your model must always have this unit column. And here, I'm just put this as input. So let's say, um, Okay, no, this should not be input. Let me make this just one unique font. Okay, this is fine. Uh, so let's say they, they can start with, let's say just 500, 500, right? Then how will this grow? How will this grow? So let's have our monthly uh, users, uh, monthly base, monthly base user, user growth. How do we expect this to grow uh, month on month for, uh, respective period. So I need to put that in input. Our, our financial modeling standard is saying whenever you are building your model, your model must always have a very clean and clear uh, description of what each values in your model represents, right? So someone will know that, okay, anything I see in this format, uh, you always have it in input because I'm, I was in a hurry. Normally you're supposed to create that um, menu guide, right? Or star guide that kind of give description. Anything you see in this format means input. Anything you see is linked from another seller and all those things. So let's say monthly base growth. So let's say for year one, right? Throughout the month, let's say they can have, um, let's, let's increase our user base. Maybe we can say with 5%. Following period, let's say with 12.5%, uh, right? Then the other period, um, let's say 10 percent right right because uh, when you get to to a level uh, when a business gets to a certain um, um, level of operation their growth seems to slow down uh, that does not mean the revenue is is decreasing right um, the truth is there's no business that actually grow on a straight line uh, growth percent I'm not saying yes revenue can be increasing but the percent difference is not always as high as that. So this, let's make this 5% and for the last period, 2.5%, right? So let's even calculate this. So we will be taking it one after the other. Let me go to my calculations and let me call this our users, our base users. So base users, Let me, let me just call this calculation. So I always try to maintain that two headings. Just, just make your model navigation easy. Yes, it's okay. really, there's nothing special about it. So base users enter, right, copy. Uh, we have that as our base period. So this is actually linked from a cell. Let's keep that in mind, uh, working with that and you are building your model. Now I need our monthly growth. Need our monthly growth. And now look at this. We have our inputs as yearly. So we are saying for this period 2020, 5% throughout the year, 12%, and for the respective period. And now we want to build our calculations, we want to build that monthly. So, which means we need to be able to pick this percent and bring it here for the respective period. And the formula to use, uh, I think I would like to use uh, our lookup formula. Right, look up formula. And what that we do is to look for this period, current year that we have in this our monthly calculation. Look for it in this period of our assumption and return this value for each respective period. So let's do that. I think look up should work. So let's try look up first. Try look up, look up value. We are looking for this 20, 22, which I'm going to log the row. So in case I want to use the formula, I can use it. 
then look for it in this our year period that we have in this input i'm going to keep constant okay i think i've missed that so let me do that again equal to look up look for this period which i'm going to keep the what the row constant comma then go to my input under the year data that i have here look for the date for the year and what's the what are we resulting so the results vector and i'm going to keep the column constant so that i can always make use of this formula for another cell so let me put this into percent i can just drag it to the right so you can see for year 2022 right everything will grow by average of five percent right so you, you could you can you can also have uh, uh, your input structure such that maybe uh june from june to march this will be your growth then maybe for so that's more like you factoring seasonality right so you are saying oh january people tend to save less and all those kind of things you can also factor it but, but that's that's discussion for another day so let's keep things straight so which means for our base user i will now be equal to the base period multiplied by one plus this respective monthly percent so this is this are user so you should not have points you can copy that to the right all right now let's create our base user schedule our base user schedule right so we're going to have our beginning users uh at uh, new base users base users that we acquired then we okay we are not ready this so the churn one let's let's put that under 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 active users yes yeah, so let's have our ending uh use base users new base users right so uh, this should also be in number because it's account it's to the right so this I can set this just as a total format so beginning so for our base that will be this 500 that we expect and the same thing will now be our beginning balance will always be the closing balance for previous year right the add added one will now be this current year growth minus this previous year so that will give us almost that same thing what we have so beginning users plus new users so here it's easy for us to see the added users for each respective period right and we can always consolidate it into yearly so for 2022 how many users so i think this is just 398 users i think that that's the fear we can always adjust this later now for the active users the active users let's say um uh, active users will now be so percent so it will be percent uh percent of our base users that will be percent of our base users so percent of our base users right so i can just copy this this format and put it here so let's say for this period let's see how that we go uh in our first year percent of our active users right might might slow it down a little bit let's even say uh like 50 percent and let's let's hope we can increase that by 10 percent so, so this plus 10 percent so i'm i'm so, so remember these are imputes so i just add so let me copy it and paste it back as value this must not contain any formula remember they are inputs so they can always come back and adjust it i just use that to be able to get that so 50 percent 60 percent 70 80 90 it's supposed to slow down a little bit as well right because if you are saying i have 1000 50 percent of 1000 now if you have if you now have 10,000 you are now saying 50 percent of 10,000 still greater than that 10 50 percent of 1000 right so i think you should slow down a little bit to make you make this 60 right to make this 60 so that the financial will not be shouting up and down right just see some people zoom over there see the, the, the figures shouting <laughs> so percent of our active users right so and let's have our churn our churn rates i can also copy this as well right and put it here so our churn rate let's just keep it at 10 percent for now remember it's a model right so build out the layout when you have the output you can always come back and change the input now so um so so let's let's so we have this right any other thing we need we can always we can always bring it back here for the revenue let's say savings um what is the percent so percent of active users percent of active users that will be saving on the platform so let me just copy this right so percent that will be saving so remember our active users is a percent of our base users so you can see how that link and how 
the, the business kind of operates, right? Uh, active users is a percent of our base users. They were now saying from these active users, what percent will we actually be saving on the platform? So the first period, first year, let's say 40%, right? So they really don't have uh, confidence in us yet. So maybe if, uh, the year two, now we are gaining ground, we have our stand and, and do things. So we can now start to increase it. Here, let's say 60, then 65 and 65, okay, or 70. So we have more people that save, right? Because they, they now trust our they trust our platform, right? So, so those, those are more like things you need to think about. So people that save, also definitely we need withdrawal. So withdrawal of the percent will be withdrawal at least. So this this will also be so let's say percent per month. So withdrawal will be, will be based on monthly period, right? So maybe we should just let's keep this at at um, uh, maybe twenty five percent of people will be withdrawing their money of the, of the amount saved will be withdrawn will be withdrawn, right? Is that right? Is that correct? Right. Okay. We can we can still we can we can work with that. So what more? What what other things do we need? What other things do we need? That things do we need? What other things do we need? So now let's 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 look at our average deposits. So average uh, savings per users, right? Um, and this would be so. Let, let let me use my my company my my country currency naira, right? Uh, so more like uh, naira per month. So how much would they be saving per month, right? So 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 let's put that as our base period. So maybe let's say average person will be saving like twenty thousand monthly, right? And we can now increase that. So average, so average, average savings growth monthly. So that will also be. So let me just copy this from us. Put it here. So I think this should be. So maybe let's just keep everything ten percent constant for now. Remember, we can always, can always add it. And the other thing we need to consider is average. Saving, savings time. Someone can decide to save uh, twenty thousand two times in a month, or one thousand or two twenty thousand three times in a month. But for at least, let's just keep it at one percent for now. That's number of times someone can save on our platform, maybe one time, two times, and and and, and do thing, right? So withdraw. Let me put this. So withdraw as percent. Uh, withdraw percent of savings. So, it's, so that is clear percent of savings right 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 and, and one other thing you can also do is you can also create scenario around this right so you are saying oh, base here so okay what if you have this what if you can get more than that so high case low case right best case base case best case. you can create that scenario so it's, it's, it's always very very interesting right when you are dealing with uh, a typical fintech then what would be the yield uh, the yield on uh, savings one that is saving on our platform definitely to to actually uh, to, to to entice them we need to be able to give them a percent right but i think the percent is always more like a yearly home so let's put it as percent per per annum or per, per year per year per year anyone so i think well okay so for this one what is the average uh you can actually get if you are depositing money now Okay, for at least for now, let's just put some fictitious assumption. Let's just say ten percent. Let's leave that for now. Let's leave that for now. Now that we have our savings, let's go straight and let's do have our, uh, let's have our, our loans, our loans input, right? Loans and advances, advances input. So, so, so don't worry. As I said, uh, we, we might decide to just make today to get all these assumptions. Then uh, next period, we then try to do the um, start the, the other part of it so make it more like oh, this is part one then we can have a part two and i know we, we still have a, one part that we did on our visualization that we did december also right so we need to vi revisit so some of them so the first one is uh what will be the percent of active of active users of active users that will be taking our loan so let me just copy this format and put it here Right. What will be the percent? What will be the percent? Let it be the percent. So a percent of people that will be taking, I think we should have more people that will be taking loan than people that will be uh, saving. That, 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 that can be funny, right? <laughs> so which means the, the business might need to go and source for funding to be able to meet up these guys. 
right? But, but let me just just fictitious assumption. Assumption. Let me say this plus ten, plus ten percent, right? So let's just keep this. Let me put it as a value. So remember. So let's let's have this for now. We can, we can always change it and, and have our rest. So what is the average loan that we can give? So average loan to users, right? So this will also be more like a per month. Let me put it here so I can even copy this this format so that we can work faster. So I can copy that and put it here. Average loan that we can give out to users, right? Uh, let's say maybe ten thousand per users, right? So what is the average average growth? Let me don't let me type that again. Let me just copy this. So average. Let me see. So this will now be average loan. Big long growth, big long growth, right? Okay, I don't think people take loan are more than percent of people who save. And uh, don't, don't worry, we, we can always we can always adjust that, right? It's, it's just input. Let's just put everything together first. By the time we start doing our calculation, if it's making sense, if it's not making sense, always we can always change that. So, average loan times this will also be per month. So let me just copy this unit. So for our average loan, what will be the percent? 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 So, 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 so let's say, um, okay. So for the average loan growth, maybe we should just put that as fifteen percent, right? So remember, we are saying it's from the savings that they have that they will be giving out loan. So which means there's already a, a capacity restriction there because you can only give out loans based on what the percent of savings that you have on grant. Now, if there be, maybe they will have some other source of funding or some working cash somewhere else, that will be another story. But for this one, let's, let's put it like this, right? Right, so also uh, loan uh, disbursed. So let's look at loan disbursed. Loan that will be disbursed from our savings. Loan that will be disbursed from our savings. Right, what will be the percent? So let me just copy this. So this should just be this, this should just be the number of percent. So what percent will be disbursed out form of loan? Right. So um let, let, let's just put some let me just put some fictitious, let's say 40 percent. Right. The second thing is loan period. So anybody that will give loan, what will be the period uh, of the loan uh, loan period, right? So I think this should just be. So anyone we give our loan to should be able to pay us within three months. This is just, just 10,000 naira, right? You agree with me? It's just very simple. Then what would be the yield? A more like interest rate yield on loans that we give out, right? So I can just copy this. Copy it and put it here. So let's say average of um, 3% per month, right? Is that fine? Or 3.5% per month, so our loans. Right, and this is what we have as our input. Right, and how do we now use this to build our dynamic, uh, uh, dynamic revenue components? Right. So I think because of our time, let's call this our part one. 